Hey plant friends. So this past weekend was the 4th of July and because of the holiday and a couple of social kind of obligations that I don't normally have on the weekends, as well as some plant tours and things piling up and getting ready for some things that are coming up on my schedule, I really got knocked off of my plan for filming this weekend. So I hope you'll forgive me if tonight it is night because I procrastinated. That's actually not true. I just was really busy today. But I hope that you guys will forgive me if we just do something that's a little bit more straightforward tonight. A couple of videos ago, I mentioned that I give all of my plants pH balanced water. And since then, I've had a couple of people ask me, what do I do to prepare my water? How do I pH balance my water? And it's really not rocket science. pH balancing is a lot more simple than you might think. So I think what I'm gonna do, since I need to prep some water and do some watering anyway, is just kind of show you guys what I do to prepare my water. And I want to kind of preface this with a disclaimer that so far with this concoction or brew, as it were, I found I've had really satisfying results with my soil plants, but I'm definitely still working on refining what I wanna feed my hydroponics plants. My LECA plants in particular, I'm still kind of figuring it out. Same with my pond plants, but I do think the pond plants are doing better. So be aware, this has worked really well for the plants that I have that are in soil. Hydroponics is a whole other bag entirely, and there are a lot of really great informational videos on hydro and semi-hydro, other places in the internet land that you can definitely find really easily and then check out there. So we're just gonna keep it simple and we're gonna do the water that I use that's working really well for my soil plants. Okay, <laughs> let's get into it. The first thing that you're gonna need is to get all your materials. I like to mix up my water in two gallon batches. So I have two of these gallon jugs and that way I just take the water that's been prepped and fill up my watering can. And if I don't use it all, then I have water that's done and ready to go as I water throughout my week. So I have gallon jugs, I have my watering can, and then I have already filled this jug with filtered water. I just use tap water in my Brita filter and fill it up that way. That may not work for other people. The water that we have in Southern California is probably vastly different than almost anywhere else in the country. And so I can get away with using filtered water. You probably know your environment better than I ever could. So it's up to you to decide whether you feel comfortable using filtered water or not, or whether or not you should go ahead and use distilled water. Definitely, if you live somewhere that occasionally has boil water warnings, you know, be conscious of the fact like if you can't drink the water, your plants probably can't either. So that's that. Then I have a funnel, which makes pouring the water into these jugs a lot easier. So if you have one laying around, I definitely recommend using it. Then I have my nutrients. So for my soil plants, I generally tend to give them liquider, which I really, really like for a lot of reasons that I don't really need to go into right now, but Liquider is the fertilizer that I've been using. And then I also give them Super Thrive. It's like a vitamin kind of for, for plants. So I've been pretty happy with the results that I've been getting from the Super Thrive. So I continue to use it. And then I actually use this little dog medication syringe <laughs> to pull the Super Thrive out of the bottle because it just doesn't smell the best. It kind of smells like dead ocean because it's made from kelp. And I don't want to risk like trying to pour it and then it getting everywhere. And it, it really is very pungent in smell. So I use this little dog syringe to get the Super Thrive out of the bottle with minimal drippage. So I highly recommend if you can find something like this, an eyedropper would also probably work too. The absolute easiest way to pH balance your water is to use a pH balance like solution kit. This one is by General Hydroponics. It wasn't very expensive. I think it was under $20. Okay, so I've got all of my pH balancing kit components out now. It comes with this card that has pH levels color coordinated by the color that they will turn if you drop this pH, what is it called? pH test indicator fluid into your solution. But honestly, for our purposes, all we really need to know is what color 
color we want the water to turn when we're done pH balancing. So for this brand, for the General Hydroponics brand, you get a little vial. This is where you're gonna test your water. You get this little pipette. Makes me feel like a chemist because it's like a legit pipette. You get the pH indicator solution, tester fluid, which I don't know if you guys can see, it might be too bright, but this is what you're gonna drop into your solution and it's gonna change the color of the fluid to show you what your pH level is. And then you have orange pH down solution and this is gonna make your solution more acidic. And then you also have blue pH up, which is going to make your solution more basic. And the pH solution spectrum, low numbers are more acidic, high numbers are more basic, and straight down the middle, seven is neutral. Seven should be the pH of distilled water. According to the information on this handy dandy card provided with the general hydroponics pH kit, the ideal pH for plant growth is between about 5.5 and 6.5, so that's slightly acidic. And it means that when we are testing our solution in our little vial, we are going to be looking for it to turn yellow. So I've done this enough times now that I don't normally test my water before I add things to it, but just to kind of give you guys, you know, a 360 view of what you would be doing if you're doing this for the first time, I'm going to go ahead and test my filtered water with nothing added to it, just as a baseline, because for the most part, your water is probably not going to come out of the tap perfectly seven neutral pH, unless you're using distilled water. So it is kind of good to know where you're starting, I guess. So. You take this little pipette and you want to fill your vial about halfway up. Okay, so as you can see, my little vial is halfway full of water. So then you take the little pH indicator liquid and open it up. Careful, don't get this on your clothes because it will change all kinds of colors and stain everything but you just need to put in three to five drops. But in my experience, three drops is sufficient for sure. So I'm just gonna put three drops into the plain filtered tap water. One, two, three. Okay, so then put the cap on the vial and shake it. Okay, so as you can, you can see, the vial did change color and it actually is yellow. So it looks like my water just filtered out of the tap is like a pretty good pH already as it is. But we're gonna put stuff in it to make it more nutritious for the plants. So that pH is gonna change. So I always rinse my vial out between testing, just in case you know there's residue, you want the sample to be as accurate as possible. So I'll just rinse it out. And now I'm gonna add my nutrients. So with liquid dirt, you're really supposed to follow the directions and as you may have guessed by this little prelude, I'm not gonna follow the directions because I don't want to. So the way that Liquid Art tells you to use their product is to pour one cap, the cap on the product, fill the cap with the product from the pouch and then pour that into a gallon of water and then you shake it up and like that is not what you're watering your plants with, that is like your concentrate. And then when you're actually going to water your plants, you take two tablespoons of that concentrate and you put that into a quart of water. So as you may have surmised, Liquid Dirt wants me to have a giant jug of dirt water sitting around my house all the time. It says that one gallon of the mix makes 50 gallons of water. Like I don't have a place to put a jug of dirt water and I don't wanna like see that in my house. So I kind of altered how I do this. I'm not saying that you should do it this way. Trust me, it's always good to follow directions, but fuck around and find out. So far, my plants are still alive, so. So what I do is I just like shake this and then there's some residue on the cap after you shake it because the fluid in this pouch is really, really viscous and thick, so it adheres to the cap. And then I just fill up the cap with water. Okay, so I've got my little cap full of dirt water and I'm gonna just pour it into this jug. I've been kind of impatient with my plants lately. Like they're growing and they're, most of them are getting bigger. Like the plants that are in soil that have been in the soil long enough to have nice root systems, like they're getting bigger, but I'm gonna actually add a little bit more today. I don't know. 
See, this experiment wouldn't be necessary if I was following the directions, but I'm not, so. Oh well. Hmm, guess we'll find out. They say that liquid art won't burn your plants, so here's to hoping that's not false advertising. Now, after I add the liquid art, I add the Super Thrive. The general kind of rule of thumb with how much Super Thrive do you add is don't exceed one drop of Super Thrive per cup of water. And so this is a gallon jug. And if you grew up in the United States, you probably heard that old adage of two cups to a pint, two pints to a quart, four quarts to a gallon. Two cups to a pint, two pints to a quart. So that's four cups to a quart. Okay, so four cups is a quart. Four quarts is a gallon. So four cups times four quarts is 16 cups. Apparently 16 cups is a gallon. Probably should just Google that. Okay, so I have my little Super Thrive and I just like squirt it in there with the dog syringe. Honestly, this dog syringe thing is really handy. Like I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so I've got my nutrients in here. I'm just gonna go ahead and close it up and you know, mix it around. So I just like shake the bottle little. Okay, so now that my solution is nice and evenly mixed, I'm going to test the pH. Once again, I have my little vial and I'm just going to fill it up about halfway. Okay, so it's filled up about halfway. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just water in a vial. <laughs> yeah, put your lid back on. You don't want to accidentally dump things over. Okay, so I'm going to put in three drops of the solution test indicator. Okay, so you can probably see it's like darkened up and changed color. Put the cap on and just shake it. Wow, it's yellow. What the hell? This is like a really anticlimactic video. Like normally when I do this, the water's blue or something. Like, God damn it. All right, well, hypothetically, if the water was blue or red or whatever, so you just like look at the card and you take your your solution and you just match the color. So this, I don't know if you guys can see it. If So this, I don't know how true to color it's gonna come out on camera. To me, it's reading yellow, but like kind of a green-ish yellow. So that means that it's a little bit basic. The ideal pH range for plant growth on this card, it's like decisively yellow. So my guess is that the pH in here is a little bit over seven, like maybe right at seven or a little over seven. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of acidity just to get that in the exact spot I want it. I swear you guys, this normally like works. Ugh, okay. Anyway, so I'm gonna give it a little tiny bit of acidity and I've done it enough times now that I know that it's so close to where I want it that I really need to add like barely any. So I'm gonna take the little pipette and I'm just gonna add like a couple drops. Like, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but can you see the orange in the pipette? It's just like a couple drops. So I'm gonna add that. And just like stir it. And then once again, I'm just gonna shake it up. I rinsed my vial and I'm just gonna fill it up again, the test solution again. Oh my God, yeah. Did I over mix it or is it just gonna turn yellow? Oh no, I think it's fine. It's yellow. Yeah, it's yellow now, but it's more, hopefully you can see it better against this white. It's yellow now, but it's more decisively yellow. So that's good. That's good for plants. So that's really all you have to do. It's definitely not rocket science by any means. I'm sorry that this little demonstration was a little bit less climactic than I anticipated. I swear that normally when I pH test my water, it does not come out yellow. But now this water is done, it's prepped. So you can leave it pretty much as long as you want if you aren't gonna use it all at once. I just put in my watering can and then I go and do some watering. So I'm gonna go do that because I got some, I got some thirsty girls. It's been warm here, you know, it's July. It's been warm here and I got some thirsty girls. They need some water. All right, cool. Well, that basically wraps it up. 
Thanks so much for chilling with me. I really hope this was helpful. And if you like this video, please go ahead and leave me a like. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down below. If you have your own way of prepping the water that you use for your plants, a different strategy for pH balancing, then go ahead and tell me about that in the comments. If you have a different fertilizer that you like better, tell me about that. If you have a tried and true recipe for your LECA nutrient water, tell me that because I am still trying to figure that out. One last thing before we go, I was checking out the channel the other day and I noticed that we are creeping up on 100 subscribers pretty quickly. So what I've decided to do is when we hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. <laughs> so don't get too excited. I mean, like, I don't know. I think it's a cool thing, but I really wanted to do a plant, but I don't have any plants that are really like that exciting that are ready to go. So for this first giveaway, we're not going to do a plant. Some of you guys have probably seen in my other videos. I always have a lot of pinned insects around. I like to do butterfly pinning as kind of my like secondary hobby. And so earlier today, I went ahead and I made something for the giveaway. So ta-da! I'm going to be giving away this beautiful pinned insect box. There's like, I think there's four or five butterflies in there. All you have to do to enter the giveaway to win this beautiful handmade piece of art by yours truly is be subscribed to the channel and leave a comment below. And then once we hit 100 subscribers, the next video after I notice that it's happened, I will announce the winners. All right, that wraps it up for reels this time. You guys have a great rest of your night and I'll see you again on this channel really soon. Bye.